You know, in one of my schools, there were two little girls who came to first grade together and who immediately became friends. Everywhere they went, they always had fun together. They enjoyed each other's company. Their relationship, even though one was short and one was tall, one was Caucasian, one was African-American, they looked absolutely nothing alike. They acted absolutely like sisters. The mothers used to joke to me and said, we think they're actually like family. Remember the, you know, may know the famous sort of rapper, the Catholic rapper, Father Stan Fortuna, and he talks about family, and he says, family is forget about me, I love you. This weekend, the church, as it celebrates Holy Trinity, talks about family, the relationship of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Catechism of the Church says that, yes, one God, three persons, three experiences of an indifferent encounter of God, inseparable. The Father loving, the Son being offered, and the Holy Spirit purifying and strengthening us in the journey of faith to encounter the Son and to return us back to the Father. The Trinity. It's a mystery. It's not meaning that it can't be understood, but that we, in order to understand the mystery of the Trinity, we have to plumb the depths of God's existence and encounter Him in this moment in which we sort of forget about our own limited knowledge and trust in God. Maybe the way to understand the Trinity is to understand how the Father loves each of us, you and I, so passionately and so freely that His only option is to give His Son to us, to reconcile us back to His heart, to bring us back to a sense of sinfulness, but at the same time to recognize that it's through our sinfulness and the redemptive act of Christ on the cross that we can return back to our Heavenly Father. God is always looking for us. He always seeks to bring us back to an encounter of His Trinitarian love. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit embracing us and helping to us to be healed of all of our wounds, all of our fears, all of our doubts. Maybe this week as you continue forward, remember the power of the Trinity. When we make the sign of the cross at a restaurant, it's merely more than moving air. We're asking God's blessing. At Mass, when I make the sign of the cross, I'm really asking God to not only bless this food, but to begin this empowering act of love, this redemptive act through the sign of the cross. Almost every Catholic prayer doesn't just merely begin with our heads bowed. We actually make an authoritative act, making the sign of the cross so that we can pray in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. This week, practice making the sign of the cross in a powerful way. Make it as if it were the last time you would make the sign of the cross. Make it as if you were standing before somebody who did not believe and had no idea why you're making that sign, but you understand deeply and powerfully that you're invoking the Trinity. Remember, stay close to the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. We can say sort of like Father Stan, right? Forget about me that I may love you. The Trinity, the gift of God to each of us, an encounter with God's mercy. Remember, folks, it's more than a sermon. It's more than a thought. It's an encounter with the Holy Trinity. God bless you.